Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be reviewing my top 10 picks for the best bourbons under $30. Now when I was going through trying to look at all my collection and figuring out what is the best buy, I also wanted to try and pick the ones that are still readily available. Now there are a couple in here, as you might expect, that are getting a little hard to find, but hopefully uh, you can search within your area and probably find these. So I started with the Eagle Rare. This happens to be the 10-year-old bottling. Uh, they've since done away with that. It's a no-age statement now. Uh, but they're still saying it's still bottled right around 10 years of age. So Eagle Rare, it's a single barrel offering. Buffalo Trace, this is a small batch blend. Uh, of course, Buffalo Trace is the standard release, bottled at 90 proof. As a matter of fact, this is also 90 proof. Next, the Elmer T. Lee, also from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, again, bottled at 90 proof. Elmer T is one of these that's starting to become allocated. That's kind of one that I was kind of iffy on, uh, but the quality is definitely there and the price and value, of course. Now, the Ridgemont 1792. Uh, this is a wonderful expression bottled at 93.7. Uh, one little quick note about the Ridgemont 1792, don't add any water, okay? Do not add water to this guy. It does not agree with that bourbon. I've had it several times, even at the distillery. And the guy there at the distillery did not recommend adding water because it does change the profile. The oak tannins really come out and they never really quite recede, okay? Uh, Elijah Craig, 12-year-old, definitely had to be in this list. Uh, the Elijah Craig bottled at 94 uh, proof. Then the Evan Williams. Now this guy I've had a love-hate relationship with for a very, very long time. Going back to, uh, geez, my first bottle was 1989. Uh, but... This happens to be a 2001 vintage, and the reason I say I have this love-hate is because it's a single barrel offering, and I tend to find it fluctuating a lot lately. Uh, a lot of people are telling me that the 2004 was really, really good, uh, almost as good as the 2000 or the, even the 94, but the problem is, is that my 2004 that I picked up was not very good at all. It was very, um, it, it felt like it was aged very fast and very hot because it became very spicy and a lot of oak tannins were coming out. So I didn't even want to review that one because I was afraid it just wouldn't come out very good. So I just went ahead and grabbed my 2001. But again, it's kind of hit and miss on this guy. You never know quite what you're going to get. Uh, Four Roses, small batch. This one, you're always going to get a really high-end quality product. Uh, bottled at 90 proof. And Larceny, coming out of Heaven Hill. Man, Larceny was the surprise, uh, I think, of my whole trip to Kentucky when I went a couple years ago. Uh, Larceny bottled, it's a wheated bourbon, so of course it's being 51% or more corn, second grain being wheat. To whereas the rest of these are all rye, rye to bourbon, so 51% or more corn, second grain being a rye. Uh, so now we're getting to the wheaters. Larceny, great value, great bourbon. And then we have, of course, this list would not be complete without the Weller. Antique 107, and the Weller 12-year-old. These two are beginning to be like the Elmer T. Lee. Hard to find, but if you can get them, uh, grab them. They're still great, great values. So let's go ahead and get through the nosing and the tastings. Real quickly, on the Eagle Rare, right on the nose, you get that real... Wow. This one has a lot of caramel, a little bit of brown sugar, almost has a Bananas Fosters thing going on in the glass. Sweet, sweet oak, hints of cinnamon, but that vanilla is definitely in that one as well. Now to the Buffalo Trace regular. Definitely, um, definitely a little more uh, dark, uh, dark fruits on this one compared to the Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare was very uh, caramel, vanilla, it's very light and sweet. This one's getting a little heavier, but without being over uh, too much oak. There's not a lot of tannins in this one on the nose. The cinnamon is also pretty low. This one's mostly caramel brown sugar, a little bit of fruits. Elmer T. Lee. Yep, definitely more fruits on this one. More red fruits. Vanilla, the caramel is definitely there. A little bit of clove in there with that cinnamon on the Elmer T. Now Ridgemont 1792. Oh, nice. Again, with the uh, lighter profile, I believe, kind of similar to the Eagle Rare. Much more caramel. 
the red fruits are definitely there, but I'm also still getting like a wisp of banana in this one as well to complement that caramel, brown sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, and a little bit of oak on the finish. Again, feeling very sweet on the oak. Now, most of these are going to be 12 years and under going into the blends or whether they're single barrels. So we're not going to get those really heavy oak tannins going on. Um, but they are beginning to get that oak influence where you're starting to get that real sweet, sweet oak coming on. And that's usually the pretty much the sweet spot for a lot of bourbons. It's going to be 12 to 15 year old. All right, Elijah Craig, 12 year old on the nose. Wow, this one's a lot fuller on the nose. A big, big brown sugar, caramel, a little vanilla, some fruits, a little bit of leather, and maybe even a little bit of tobacco on the nose on that one. Yeah, very, very nice nose. All right, the Evan Williams 2001 single barrel. Oh, this one's nice. Again, love, hate. You never know what you're going to get, but this one's actually really nice. This one is its definitely a little bit lighter on the brown sugar. It's leaning more towards caramel. There is vanilla. There is some clove, cinnamon. But on this one, I'm getting a really nice eucalyptus or mint uh, aspect on the nose as well. Almost touching cedar. Um, rather than feeling like oak barrel, you're getting a cedar with the way that mint's uh, reacting. All right, Four Roses, small batch. Uh, Four Roses, you're always so good. It's, it's very clean. It's very simple. It's not heavy or uh, a really uh, big bourbon on the nose. It's just very light. Uh, again, with the caramel, a little bit of brown sugar. But there's also a nice citrus uh, aspect to the red fruits that are running in here as well. Searching for the finish. Uh, trying to find trying to find some oak or any kind of cedar. I'm not really finding that. I am finding a little bit of clove mixed in on the spice note to complement that citrus. Very, very nice. All right, Larceny. Now to the weeded bourbons. Wow. Much sweeter on the nose, uh, but also... You're, it's lacking some of that spice characteristic that I was finding throughout all these with that cinnamon and clove. This one you're getting more heavy on the brown sugar. Fairly heavy on the caramel. It just smells very sweet and soft. A little bit of a, uh, what is that, a doughiness coming on. And that's that wheat grain. And red fruits. Very, very simple, but well executed uh, for the larceny on the nose. All right, Weller 107 Antique. Not quite as doughy as larceny, surprisingly. But I am also noticing that the larceny is 92 proof. This is 107. I'm not noticing that much of a difference on the nose as far as it burning me or, or feeling or uh, smelling very hot. So it's being distilled very... Uh, very nicely. Caramel, brown sugar again. This one I do get a little bit of cinnamon on it. And a touch of leather as well. Again, it's doughy but not quite as doughy as the Larceny. Alright, Weller 12 year old. So the Weller Antique 107 is usually about seven years of age. I think, again, I think they've done away with the age statement, but on to the Weller 12. Uh, there you go. Wow. Rich caramel, rich brown sugar notes. That doughiness is definitely coming through here. A touch of the barrel char on this guy. Red fruits, very, very vibrant for being 12 years of age. That one makes me want to take a sip right away. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the actual tasting. I'll try to run through these pretty quick so this video is not too long for you. Uh, the Eagle Rare. The viscosity on it, medium, 
maybe a touch below that, low to medium, not super oily. I do like the way it's very light and delicate up front. It feels like it's just a little vanilla, a little caramel. As it goes in, you get that spice swell coming on. And on the finish, the vanilla is still going in. There's actually a little bit of dried coconut in there and leather. Is it leather? It's a mix of leather and actually uh, uh, almost like a cigar box on the finish of that Eagle Rare. Uh, nicely done for that price point. Okay, on to the regular Buffalo Trace. A little sip in between each one, I believe. All right, regular Buffalo Trace. Every now and then you can find this one in a single barrel release, but this is the standard, what you're going to find at most stores. Hmm. Viscosity. About a medium. This one feels a little more uh, dense than the Eagle Rare did. Good amount of sweetness. Caramel. Burnt sugar again. That it feels like that brown sugar, but mixed with that caramel, it just feels like it's being burnt a little bit. A little bit of a, almost like a creme brulee when you start caramelizing that top. Difference is, there's a pretty big spice well on this guy. Transitioning as we go into, there's a hint of mint going into the finish where it's feeling more like leather and oak. Actually, on this one, I'm surprised to find that much oak on it. It it's actually starts to feel like it's drying a little bit on the finish. Again, for that price point, that's really good. That's a minor, minor flaw. And again, they're batches, so... Everything's going to be a little different here and there, but overall, a really, really nice bourbon. Okay, Elmer T. Lee. Ugh. Definitely has a medium viscosity. Very soft and smooth going in. Wow, that's drinkable. Mmm. Very creamy palette. I would say that's actually just a touch above a medium viscosity. As it goes in, caramel, vanilla, then we're getting that cinnamon spice coming on, but it's not as big as over here. And as it rolls over onto the finish, it's just feeling like um, some rich uh, leather on that finish. That oak is there. No real mint. Uh, the fruits on it are definitely up front. It almost fix, feels like a... It's definitely red fruits, red berries, but there's also a twist of citrus on it as well. Very, very complex for that price point. Wow. That's why that one's becoming allocated. It's very, very high quality. So people are actually going out and really searching for it. Okay. Wow, good finish on that one too. Ridgemont's Reserve, 1792. Smells delicious. This one's an eight-year-old. Wow. Spot on. I wouldn't want them to age that too much further. This bottling in particular. Very similar mouthfeel to the Emerald Chi Lee. Rich brown sugar up front. Wow, toasted oak on the mid palate. Going in with those fruits, red fruits running throughout. Yeah, that toasted oak almost feels it's on the finish, you're getting almost like the char aspect to it. Fruits are still running, caramel still running all the way through the finish. And very Wow, really kind of grain forward on it. So like, you know, typically you start running out of the corn when they get this old. You don't get that on the flavor. On this one, I'm still finding that grain, that, that cooked mash is still coming through on the distillate. Very, very nice. Again, don't add water to it. You can try it for yourself as an experiment, but don't pour a big glass because I don't think you're going to be happy with it. Uh, next, the Elijah Craig 12.
perhaps the best nose so far. That Elmer T, very close to this one. It's just one so big, it's so rich on the nose. Wow. Medium viscosity. It feels almost as creamy and smooth as this one is going in. Brown sugar, again, the caramel, the vanilla on this one. A touch of coconut. Fruits are very well integrated into that brown sugar and caramel. On the finish, I am getting tobacco and leather. A little bit of orange zest in here as well. Spice aspect, that's the thing that I'm trying to find. It doesn't really swell super big in the middle, but on the finish, um, it's lingering. You're getting, it is cinnamon and clove on this one. Going along with that leather and that really nice oak component and that brown sugar and caramel running throughout. Wow, that one's good, really good. Has been good for a very long time. All right, Evan Williams, 2001. Wow. It really has that, wow, great nose, let's see. Oh yeah, that one's there. I would say on the viscosity, let's see. Mm-hmm. Medium viscosity. This one's leaning more brown sugar than caramel. And there is a mint aspect coming on at that mint palette. Cinnamon, a little mint. On the finish, it's the oak is there. Uh, tannins. They're there. They're not drying it out too bad. On the fruits, I was getting that banana aspect that I kind of found on the nose. It's definitely coming through on the palate on this one. I'm getting red fruits, a little bit of banana. Caramel. Wow. Yep. Wow. Okay. That one's great. Again, it's hit and miss, but hopefully you get a good one. All right. Four Roses, small batch. Let me clean the palate a little more on that one. That one's pretty big. All right. Wow. Medium viscosity, maybe a touch below that. Low to medium viscosity, not super oily. Not super complex either. The brown sugar is not really being dominant here. It's about more about like a caramel, a little vanilla, definitely a good amount of citrus and red fruits being pretty vibrant in this one. I'm searching that finish. I'm trying to find... Wow. It's very easy to drink, I will say that. About four rows of small batch. Not overly complex. Uh, the most unique thing to it is going to be that that citrus aspect to the caramel, a nice cinnamon spice, a little bit of clove in there as well. On the finish, a touch of leather. Um, not extraordinary or on the finish, but it's very, very nicely done overall. Now to the larceny. still good. Definitely has a big amount of doughiness on it. Viscosity medium, maybe even it feels that way that wheat is coming on. It actually feels a little, a little touch above that medium. Very, very creamy. Dense though. This one is, these wheaters definitely tend to get dense feeling because you get this really nice sweet brown sugar up front. And then you get that doughiness coming on. It makes it feel very, very full flavored on your palate. Cinnamon spice, 
uh, medium swell onto that mid palette. Doesn't feel overly hot, but you definitely know it's there. On the finish, a little bit of oak character. It's feeling ten kind of sweet, not too tannic. It's not drying out, but that doughiness is just running through the whole thing. Fruits on it. That's the one thing I was really searching for. A little bit of red fruits, but that's about it. Uh, not too much as far as citrus or anything else because that doughiness is really uh, kind of dominating the whole thing throughout. If you like wheat or bourbons, that's a great one. All right. Weller 107 Antique. Oh, yeah. Nice. Viscosity doesn't feel as oily as the Larceny did. This one's about a medium. But the brown sugar is bolstered. Cinnamon spice is also bolstered on that mid palette. Feeling mm, kind of like Red Hots. This one's a different type of cinnamon. Um, this one is more Saigon cinnamon, so it's definitely a little bit pricklier on the tongue, a little, a little hotter, a little spicier. But as that rolls over, that caramel is kind of coming through a little more on that finish little bit of leather on the finish. Red fruits that showed up on that mid palette are also still lingering on this finish. Yep, the unique thing on that one is gonna be that cinnamon spice right there at that mid palette as it swells. Very enjoyable though, very enjoyable though because that doughiness that I was finding on the Larceny is in here but it's a little softer so the red fruits are allowed to play a little more. Uh, I think that's what I really liked about that one. All right, Weller 12. Ugh. Great, great nose. Wow. Yep. Again, just like the Elmer T. Lee, there's a reason why these are being sought after. Good medium viscosity, maybe even a touch more. Caramel. This one does have that creme brulee aspect going on. Fruits, burnt sugars. dried coconut on this one. No real spice swell on that mid palate. It's very creamy. It just all melds in the mouth. Leather and tobacco on the finish. Touch of oak. Tannins are there but they're not drying it out tremendously. Wow, that's great. So again, if you can find these, these are definitely worth adding, especially at the price point of $30 and under. These will be many of these that are coming out, unfortunately, that are $100 and up. These limited expressions, no age statements. Um, sadly, the quality has kind of been decreasing on some of these, on some of those, actually, when I'm talking about those $100 ones. Uh, but these are tried and true. They've been there a long time. They're going to be there. So hopefully you can find them. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.